Hey guys, I'd like to introduce you to a new piece of software called, called Gyroflow. This software is very new. It's in the alpha stage. It's not perfect. My workflow is not perfect. So we're not going to see production quality material here, but I wanted to show you the proof of concept. The software developer has a YouTube video that goes through a full front to back tutorial. I'll put a link in the description so you can go watch that. My video is not a how to, it's just to show you that it works. So I took some raw footage from my DJI air unit. I ran through the process outlined by Elvin Chen, who's the author of the software, and I got a result. I got some stabilized footage from my DJI Air unit. So I'd like to walk you through that just a little bit and let you see how it works. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. One of the first things you do when you start using Gyroflow is you have to calibrate your camera. So the idea is you put this test pattern on your screen and then you use your camera to take video. And then you load that video into the software and you run these calibration points. And it just informs Gyroflow how your particular camera distorts. I don't have the specifics behind it, but it is a critical step. Not that hard to do. Follow the author's instructions and you'll get your way through it. Because GyroView relies on gyro data from your black box log, you'll need to pull the black box log off your computer and export it to a CSV file. It's very easy to do this in the beta flight log viewer. You simply load up your log file and then just export it as a CSV. Okay, once you have your video file, your camera calibration, and your CSV from your black box log, you're ready to import all of that information in and then synchronize your log data to your video. Again, there's a very detailed process on how to do this. It's way outside the scope of my video to try and explain that. But you do have to create synchronization for the start of the video and the start of your log file, along with the end of your video and the end of the log file. The process is actually very simple. You just follow it step by step. All right, let's recap the steps. The first thing you do is create a camera calibration file. The process is laid out very clear in Elvin's video. After you've done that, you'll extract your black box log from your flight computer and then convert it to a CSV. Very simple to do that as well. Finally, you're going to import your calibration from your camera, your black box CSV, and your video file into the tool. And then you synchronize. You line up the start of the black box log and the start of your video. And that's it. After that, you export. Once you've done the camera calibration, you don't have to do it again for that camera. So going forward, the only thing you need to do is extract your log and then import those three files into the tool and export. Next up, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the original and then the original and the modified files side by side with the gyro correction still in frame. And then I'll show you just the gyro corrected footage where you can actually see the gyro corrections taking place. And then finally, I'll crop the gyro corrections out and show you what the final product is. Although I'm gonna leave just a little bit of those corrections in so you can see where the bumps actually happen so you can see it working. Okay, this is the stock DJI footage. This is exactly how it came off of the SD card. I didn't touch color, I didn't crop it, I didn't do anything to it. This is exactly how it came off. Now, one of the things that I'll tell you that I made the mistake on, I should have set this in four by three mode. So I didn't and therefore it recorded in 16 by nine. Going forward, I will set this in four by three mode. And by doing that, we get a little bit more vertical resolution to work with for the gyro stabilization. So highly recommend using that four three format because you get more data when you do that. And having more data allows you more room for gyro stabilization. So this is just a quick little look at what the stock footage on this camera looks like. It's not terrible, this doesn't suck, but you can see that it's not stabilized right there. And that, by the way, I was trying to help it out a little bit. I was trying to illustrate the point. So I was a little choppy on the controls just to kind of give the idea of what non-stabilized footage is going to look like. So that was actually by design somewhat. All right, here's the first export I ran. You can see the gyro stabilized material is on the left, the non-stabilized material is on the right. And the reason I think that's the case is because you can see those black blobs kind of moving around. That indicates gyro error, and I believe that's what they're actually correcting in the video output. So anyway, this is what it looks like when you run it in split window view. I also ran it without split window view enabled just so you can see the raw output from Gyroflow. Here's where all the effort pays off. This is the first export that I did without using split window. This is just a straight up export with the hardware acceleration. 
Notice that you are going to lose image data when you do gyro stabilization. They have to use some of the image data to create that stabilized effect. But after this file is rendered, all you have to do is load it up into your editor and you have to crop it down to the area that doesn't show any of those black blobs around the side. Now on my first crop, I got it most of the way there, but while I flew around, I still saw some of those blobs come in and I decided rather than crop it any further, I wanted to leave those blobs alone so you guys could see that the gyro stabilization was actually working. Okay, in this segment, you can see the gyro flow stabilized material on the bottom. It has been cropped. You will see a black blob appear from time to time momentarily, keep an eye out for that. But I have the original unstabilized footage on the top view. The reason I did it this way is because I wanted you guys to get an idea of how much material you lost when you do stabilization. Also keep an eye on the screen and you'll see these black blobs enter from the sides and the top, especially when I do more aggressive maneuvers. I believe that's the gyro error being shown. In production footage, you'll want to crop it far enough where you don't see those black blobs, so you will lose a little bit more data than what I show here. Okay, I'll wrap this up by just showing you what the final product looks like. This is gyro stabilized DJI Air footage, no modifications to color. It's cropped just enough to fit the entire scene and get rid of those black gyro error blobs. I'm not sure exactly what those things are called, but it's kind of what I think they are. And I'll tell you what, this is really effective. I'm impressed with what's going on out there with software. What these guys are coming up with is just amazing. I'd like to give a real big shout out to Elvin Chen and say thanks, Elvin, for sharing your software with us and your creative streak. Awesome job. I can't wait to see how this project develops in the future. I hope you liked my introduction to Gyroflow. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It'd be really helpful if you hit that thumbs up too. And if you didn't like the video, hit thumbs down, but do me a favor and tell me why. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.